sit. We always have Mojo sit before we come out. So he's sitting in a sit stay. We step out. He waits till I come back next to him. I say okay. He walks through with me. See, even now he tends to rush out a little bit. But instead of pulling you out the doorway like he used to do, it's just a little. You know, occasionally, when he's excited, he's a little bit excited because we have a camera person here. Um, he'll go. He'll. Uh, surge forward a little bit and you may not have even seen it, but I just went like this It's got this little tiny prong collar on it helps you a lot with handling him um, And I just tapped him and he slowed down and then out here if we were gonna let him be free I just no, I would just pat his chest and say go and he would be free But in this case, we're actually gonna go out on a walk on the street because I want to show you how he, he does on a leash out on the street and uh we always start the walk this way so that on the inside of my house, when we put the leash on, that's when the training starts. He's calm from the very second we start the walk. So by the time we get out there, and we're gonna sit at some other gates, which you're gonna see in a second. Um, by the time he gets out there and he's on free time, he's much calmer because we spent this two minutes or so coming out from the house and making sure that he waited at all the boundaries and stayed calm in the very beginning of the walk. Okay. And this is usually the toughest boundary because it's the gate that leads out into public onto the street and there's always people around here, distractions, other dogs, all that kind of stuff. So you see I have him wait, he waits. I step through first and step back just to accentuate the fact that, okay, just to accentuate the fact that this is not his boundary to pull me through and rush through whenever he feels like it. But really, it's my boundary, and he only passes through gateways, doorways, even curbs, like we're about to do. Only passes through with me. So if you practice this for a while, any dog will be way less likely to run through an open door, run out in the street. Every day we go out like this, so just think what happens over the days and weeks and months that pass by. If you walk him like this, take an extra two minutes to start the walk the way we started inside, inside uh, behind the front door, and then end it like this. Sit, curb obviously, another sit stay at a curb. And even though he's really excited to be out here, no. See if he makes a mistake. See how excited he is? Mainly because we never have a person standing there pointing a, a thing at us. But see, if he makes a mistake, you say no. Kind of step into him, reset him. Everything's very gentle but firm. If he makes a mistake, you just reset him and do it again. And usually at this point, if he does make a mistake, it just takes one, one time to reset him and then he does it your way. And I'm gonna give him a treat for this. Good. And then we're going to cross the street. No. We're going to cross the street in training mode. And right there, he popped up before I released him out of the sit to walk across the street. And I just said no, and I just applied a little bit of pressure. I didn't yank and jerk and pop or hang him. Just a little bit of pressure. His butt went back where it was supposed to be, and I released the pressure. Okay. Now we're going to go across the street and walking extra super slow because he tends to get very excited and if you move slower he's going to slow down as well so now we're on the other side of the street I'm going to have him sit one last time and pat his chest and say go and now it's the, the start of the walk and we'll just show you a little, a little bit of a <coughs> leash walking stuff here Come. Good boy. So we're gonna just do a little little leash walking stuff here, a little leash walking exercise. Um, what I've been doing for just a couple minutes a day is bringing him out here, letting, letting him be free, and then um, letting him sniff around, pee, whatever he wants to do for a few minutes, and calling him back to come like I just did. And then, okay, doing these left hand circles. You see the way I'm doing it. Sit. Good. And you're moving forward as you're doing them. Okay. Maybe six or eight feet. Left circle. All the way around like this. And then sit. Eye contact always, of course. Good. And then okay. Okay. 
it's a good time to do this this video sit because good he's very excited because of the camera person okay so he really wants to to rush but i'm just tapping you can see i'm just doing these little taps sit and walking very slowly good when you turn left into the dog it draws them back next to you okay and see how calm i'm being and how slowly i'm moving for a dog that pulls a lot that has been used to pulling his whole life like he has been sit good if you handle him this way out in public for a while you're going to see that he continues to calm down more and more be more and more focused pull you less and less we just got out here we've only been out here for like three minutes and you can see already he's starting to calm down because of the way we're handling him okay one more barely walking so i'm kind of tapping him going left and then one more sit good and then release go and you see if you don't choke up and you don't restrain from the very beginning he's not going to pull you so you see how the leash is loose and all i'm doing is he's excited because there's a dog at a fence line over there barking you can probably hear it but you see how even though there's a dog over there you can see how he is still not pulling if he does go ahead of me good boy he'll come back to me because i've called him to come to me so many times good boy and I'm, I'm not even using a treat right now i'm just loving him up when he comes back to me but if he does pull on the leash just the slightest little tap will make him come back to you and it's because of the way i'm handling the leash if i was trying to restrain him if i was anticipating oh he's going to pull me oh he's going to go over there and i started first with the tension he'd get worse and worse and worse but since i start with just the body language that okay the little the taps left circles like that in the very beginning sit and also the recalls calling him back to come to me a lot go we have a dog that doesn't pull anymore he really he really likes the camera person he wants to go over there but he he you know there's like a this zone that he knows now where he won't go beyond the six or eight feet of the six foot leash in my arm if he does you just kind of tap it or come always call him back to you if he's pulling you and it always works really well it's so much better than struggling with him pulling on him restraining him because of course the tension on the leash that tight leash just makes all of that worse anyway so whoever takes him when he after he leaves here they do those left hand circles start the walk the way we started it on um, the inside of the front door all the way out every day is going to just going to keep getting better and better come on buddy let's go this way sit good we're practicing our commands here out in public where it's much harder for mojo to focus because there's a lot going on and mojo has always had an issue with staying calm in the presence of uh, a lot of things going on for example um, you know a lot of people walking around other dogs which of course you're going to see on the other part of this video uh, somebody walking around with food on a plate like maybe I don't know chicken breast on a plate like this as we walk past him in the house and we were practicing our sit stay with mojo as people randomly walk around us and do things here at very busy very busy public place and just want to show you what kind of sit stay he has in the presence of distractions of course, we're not going to say stay because sit means to stay. So we don't say stay. We just say the command one time. And then if I'm going to release him, if he gets up, I would say no and just gently but firmly put him back just with a little leash tension. I wouldn't be popping or jerking. I'd just be saying no and pull up just with a little tension. His, his butt would go back. He hasn't made a mistake, though. See how he stopped himself, though? He deserves a treat for that. Good, always reward him like that, where he's looking straight up into your eyes. So you're not doing this, you're not doing this, where he's looking this way or that way. It's very important, no, see, he just made a mistake. 
So I said no, and I just applied a little bit of tension. Super easy to do. There's no jerking, popping. There's no rough stuff. He's a very sensitive dog. And when you want to reward him in a sit stay, eye contact, straight down, good. He's literally looking in your eyes as he gets the treat. It's very powerful because you always want the dog always checking back to you. And you don't want to have to always have some command have the dog look at you. You want to train him in a way that he naturally is always looking at you because he loves to. And that's how you do it. Whenever you can reward him with, um, you know, and we're rewarding him with a food treat, as you give him the treat, he's looking at you in the eyes, then you'll see that he's watching you most of the time over time because of the way you reward him. It's all about how you reward him that matters. You can walk past if you want. People think they can't be in the video or something. Um, so when you're rewarding him for a really solid sit stay, that's the way you do it. I'm just letting some other people kind of walk past. No, that was a little bit much for him. So see how I step into him as well? When you turn the dog away from his mistake, and you saw how he did it with my body, I'll do it again. Okay, let's, let's pretend he popped up again. You say no when he pops up before you release him. Turn him away from his mistake. Just do a turn where your body is literally hurting him like that. The leash stays loose because you're not dragging him to your right. You're going to your left. and doing a circle, you, it's a reset for his mind. It's so much better than not doing that because you can make mistake after mistake after mistake. So if, if he makes mistake, no, it's okay, it doesn't matter. If he makes mistake after mistake um, and you don't turn him away to reset his mind, he can pr easily start practicing the mistake and, just, and the mistake becomes ingrained and it just gets worse and worse. But this is a great place to practice. You see all the stuff that's going on, all the carts and the people and everything. And he's a dog that really has a problem focusing. Good. And we've had all these, these distractions pass by in the last minute or so. And so I'm rewarding him with eye contact, straight down. Such a good boy. He's staying calm. The leash is loose the whole time. Nope. Somebody walks past. And I'll show you what to do. See, he popped up before I released him because he's very attracted to people that walk right past. So I'll show you with the next person that walks by what to do. So we have somebody walking by right now. So this is what to do. If somebody's gonna walk by, draw him into looking to you and give him a treat as they walk by. And it's a, a little desensitization exercise that we do. And now I'm seeing that he has that little issue here where they, somebody walks too close, he can't help himself. He wants to say hi to them or whatever he wants to do. I think that's what he wants to do. He's not lunging. Good. So for a while, we're going to practice with that. Now we, we have a cart coming past. I don't know if it's which side it's coming on, but we'll watch for that. Um, and we'll wait for another distraction. We've been here practicing the sit stay for a little while, practicing with distractions and people walking past and so now I'm going to end that sit stay with just a little basic walk around here and maybe one more person walking past. Good boy. So when they come from behind us, he's already getting better since we've been here for a few minutes now. Good. Calming down. And we have some more distractions about to pass by. So we see that distraction. Hey over here as people walk past and kids are walking right into us good so no tension on the leash if you try to control with the leash or hold him like that you, he's going to get stressed out and you'll have nothing so you use your your skills and your eye contact good giving him a reward at the right moment to desensitize him to the distraction approaching, just as you see me do a, a couple of times here in this clip. And then to release him, to walk with him, and we're gonna go do something else here. You just pat your leg and say, okay, come on, buddy. So we're gonna practice a little downstairs here. Down, this is gonna be not easy for him because we got a lot of things going past. It's okay, you can go past us. So we're just gonna, 
show you how he is with distractions. Good boy. Very good. So I'm going to do it right here so people can't walk around me. Okay. I'm going to put him down here. So we moved to a spot here where people couldn't like sneak around us because we want people walking past us because I want to show you how he is when there's a lot of activity and he's in a downstay. And of course we practice out in public every day now because that's really where it matters. I mean, he has to have, he needs to be calm. Even the doors would spook him before, the doors opening up and closing. Good. You see how I draw him away from that distraction, whatever it is. Good. And you're giving him rewards at the right moment. Like there's a cart coming out right now. Good. If you reward at the right moment when a distraction is passing by, Good. You never have to force him to stay there. You never need any leash tension. You just, literally, the message to him is, good stuff happens as something or somebody good is approaching or walking past us. And it, it over time, good. It desensitizes him to those things. And you saw him, that person who walked past, grabbed a, um, a cart kind of noisily and and he heard that noise, he looked at me, he looked back at me, he got paid. You saw that just happen. You didn't see the guy, but you heard the noise, and then he looked, he looked back. Good, see how he's looking back at me now? Like he notices something, and then he looks back at me to get paid. Good. And that's the way it's supposed to work. And now we got something really noisy going past us, going right past us. And I gave him a big pile of food, because that was huge, that's, that's difficult to do for him to stay in a downstay as something like that goes past. So you're not, or whoever adopts him is not gonna have him in this kind of environment. You're not gonna live in this kind of environment, obviously, but good, practicing in a place where there's so much going on like this enables him to handle, there's another one. Good enables him to handle whatever goes on in a regular household. Because at the bottom line is a distraction is a distraction is a distraction. And if he can learn how to handle all this noise and all this busyness and people coming from behind and all the things with wheels going past, he's gonna be able to handle most things in a normal household or walk on the street. But of course, the reason that he can do this, that he can handle it, is because of the way we're handling him and how we just do basic things like downstays and sit stays and come commands, how we bring him through doorways and how, how we handle the leash when he's on a walk. It all ties together. Good boy, here comes another cart. Good. Please walk past, it's okay. Very good. Good. Um, so that's why we're doing the video so you can see everything but you see the results of doing what we just do every day is a much calmer dog that can handle some pretty intense stuff that he, he couldn't otherwise handle good so whoever takes him after us of course they'll get lessons on just the basic stuff that you see on this video and then he'll get even better so whoever takes him after this whoever adopts him uh, or whatever foster home he goes to, if they keep doing the things we've been doing, he'll get even better than he is now. So now we're going to release him, and he has a little bit of an issue with um, popping up at the last minute, right before you release him. And of course, you know, he has to, should really wait to be released from a down state or a sit state or whatever. So walk around this side of him, and to be next to him, pat your leg and say, okay. And he gets up, have him sit. This is the way we always release the dog from a downstay. He's doing really well with distractions here. And then to let him be free, pat his chest and say, go. Just as all the workmen pass by with all, carrying all the stuff. He's doing pretty well though. Sit. Doing a little greeting routine with Mojo out here with somebody. We approached the person, Mojo's in a sit-stay, um, went over and gave, gave the person that uh, we're introducing him to a little treat to offer to him. We have stuff going on. We're out on the street in public and I always do it out in a situation like this because there's more distractions, which shows you that he can do this 
where there's a lot going on in a real life situation. So that's why we're out here on the street. So I step back to him. He stayed in a sit stay. I'm going to pat his chest and say, go say hi. He's going to go say hi, get a treat. Come. I'm going to call him back to me. Good. And as you can see, sit. We're using his training skills in the context of a real life situation of him being introduced to somebody. And I can even practice his sit stay, which forces him to be even more focused than usual. He's a little bit nervous, but he's still able to do this. It's adding a lot of structure to an otherwise pretty uh, possibly crazy situation where he's meeting somebody new or somebody that he knows. Nope, if he gets up, you say no. And you just do your little, what I call it, little do-over circle, reset him gently, but uh, firmly. Um, usually like somebody comes over or you want to introduce him to somebody, he's going to be really excited. He might jump on them. He could get protective or aggressive with a new person if they strike him the wrong way. You know, if like they're wearing a hat or it's a tall man like he is and they don't do the right thing. So that's why we practice this greeting routine with usually somebody different every day uh, or at least one of five or six uh, people that work for me so that he's used to doing it with a lot of different people. Um, and it's a very structured way to meet somebody. When you take over, uh, all you have to do is this routine. He knows you plug a new person or a person that excites him in that, in that spot there and he knows exactly what to do. Go say hi. Good, come. And this time, why don't you try to pet him? Okay. Sit. So instead of him jumping all over somebody or something else that's inappropriate, he goes over, accepts the gift, comes right back to you because you're running the show. This is the way this exercise has been practiced. And so he learns to never jump on somebody. Nope. As excited as he may be, he knows that this game, sit, is only played one way. It accelerates the process of him getting to know somebody when they come to your house. Um, or it accelerates the process of him calming down when somebody he already knows but gets really excited about when they come over. Because uh, you have your sit stay, you have your release command, you have your come command, which if he does get inappropriate at all, he starts to get excited, jump, whatever, you can call him back to you and it works really well as you can see. Nope. If he's really excited like this, you just keep resetting him. He needs to play this game the right way if he wants to go over and get another treat from the person. And notice how the person that, that is um, giving him the little treat over there, he's down on his level. He's not going to stand there and ignore him until he starts to jump. If all good things are down on the ground, the petting, the treat, all of that, then there's no reason for him to jump because everything is down on ground level. So that helps keep him on all fours instead of, uh, you know, somebody not not paying attention to him and then when he starts to jump then they correct that's not a good way to do it because the correction actually is attention for that behavior so he loves to be corrected pushed away told off or whatever somebody would say that actually adds fuel to the fire makes him more excited and that problem gets worse when you do it that way so always make sure that the person is down on his level go say hi petting good he's really all about coming back to me he's very fast as you can see sit but that's good. Like if you ever had an issue with him being obnoxious with a, a visitor, you're not going to have that now because he comes right back to you and it makes him really comfortable around that person because, you know, in this little routine, you're obviously calling the shots and he knows that. So one more time, make sure he really waits until you pat his chest and say, go. Good boy. Come. <laughs> good. So you can see how, how many times you practice this because I don't even say, have to say the C-O-M-E word. He's already coming back to me. So this is a great little exercise to do with people that you know, family members, whoever he happens to be living with because you've got your little sit stay, you've got your recall and you can, you can practice it. You always want to practice it outside of the house, especially with new people because when you're in an open area, and uh, a more neutral area, not inside the front door. That's the worst place to practice, especially with a new person. That's where he's bound to be most excited. So when you do it in an open area, an, a more neutral area, like this is in front of our house uh, on the street, 
he's going to be a lot uh, more likely to be calm and do things your way and, and be okay with the new person. And then you can all go into the yard, into the house, maybe do one more of these inside the house once you walk inside. And depending on how he's doing with that person, you know, do you gradually ease up on your control over him, maybe even take him off the leash if he's, if he's being calm around that person. Okay. We are doing a little exercise here. I wanted to show you what we've been doing because I know that somebody was having an issue with him getting really excited when um, there was food being brought through his area in a bowl. Maybe it was his food, maybe it was somebody else's food, or, but I don't know what specifically what the details were, but we've been practicing with that type of situation here and wherever he goes when he leaves our place, uh, they could watch the video and see what we did and see how he is now and also uh, continue to practice that if he ever has issues in the next household that he's in this would be a thing to practice so he never goes back to that inappropriate behavior of i think he was jumping up he was getting super excited maybe knocking the food out of the person's hand i don't know exactly what happened but let's show you what we've been doing so i have him on a leash obviously i'm going to have him do a little a down down stay where he goes down and then we have a fresh plate of chicken kind of turned towards the camera and show it's chicken. We've been practicing his downstay and then having somebody walk around with a plate of something really yummy in their hand. So walk around him. Good. All I'm doing is um, the same sort of thing you saw me do at Home Depot. Good. Where we had a big distraction passing by. And good. I desensitized him with food to that distraction and keep walking around and see how he looks at her. He knows that chicken's there, good. See how he looks back at me, good. Keep walking around. Once you get there, then just go back around. We're gonna do several, several um, circles around him. Good, and I'm just using this natural balance sausage. It's a dog training treat, but that's the real good stuff. That's nice, hot chicken breast we just cooked in a plate. And he's staying in a downstay. And good. So this is the exercise that you do. Now pass it off to me and stand right there. So I have it now. But he's in a downstay. His downstay is getting pretty solid. And so there's no way that he can jump up because he wasn't released. So and you know that he knows what's here. So he gets a nice big reward for that. Good. So that's the sort of thing we've been doing every day. And sometimes it's salmon. We've used salmon as well because sometimes we use salmon for the, the treats for the dogs. Uh, and if he can handle it and stay in a downstay around those types of distractions, that's way, um, those are, I think those things are way more um, desirable than maybe a bowl of dog food or whatever was being walked through. Um, so the byproduct of doing this and keep walking around, okay? Good. Is that when I release him, okay, sit, and then go. Oh, you're free, buddy. And then we have, he's just on free time. She's still walking around. And she's not even holding it up high. He knows what it is. Good boy. Do you see how he keeps coming back to me? Like he, he sees what she's carrying. And I'm just not even going to give him food. See how he sees? Good boy. And then I pet him. So he'll look at it. Come back to me. Good boy. Very good. He's loose, she's standing right there with the chicken. Turn to the side so that the camera can see you. And he knows that chicken breast is right there. Good boy, very good. So I've done that exercise with him so many times. It's an automatic behavior for him to look away from it, go to me, good. Even if I don't have any food, I'm still saying good, which every time I rewarded him, I said good. Now there's no food, but I'm saying good and petting him. And it's still a reward in his mind for ignoring 
the big prize there. And she's not even holding it up like this. She's holding it just regular, you know, chest level as if she was walking through. Why don't you walk on this side, walk past him. See how he's sitting there? He's such a good boy. He's not jumping up anymore. You know he wants that chicken, but at least he's not jumping up. We don't have to, I'll take the leash off so you can see it's not related to the leash. We don't have to force him to stay there. If I wanted to, I could say, come, and call him to me. Good, because he starts, now he's starting to kind of follow her around. Sit, keep walking around. Go, he's free, so keep walking around. Good boy, good. I just wanted to show you how he is now with uh, this situation. And I think that's enough so you see that he's doing much better now. Sit. Always have him sit before you send him in. Open the door. Make sure he doesn't pop up. You're never restraining him so the leash is always loose. With your right hand, pat his chest and say, go. And he'll go in there. Loves his crate, of course. He always gets a treat when he goes in there and turns around. We're using this natural balance sausage, which is also complete food. So he's, when he's getting rewarded for his training, he's also eating part of his meal. And very quickly, I can take off all of his equipment in there. And a lot of dogs have an issue with jumping, being, getting very excited, overstimulated when you take off or put on their collars, their training collars. So if you do both, put on and take off in, in the crate, you'll see how easy it is, how calm they are. And then later on, outside the crate, you can do it with little or no problems as well. But uh, if you do this for a while in the new home, whoever adopts him or wherever, wherever he goes next, you'll see he'll be much calmer in the beginning of your walk and also at the end of your walk. So I took off the choke chain, took off this little prong collar. This little prong collar is, you see me using it throughout the video, it's the smallest size they make. It closes with, the, closes with the same pressure all the way around the back and the front. It's not used to cause pain. The strength of this is that it's, it's the same pressure all the way around, so it makes it just really easy to just th do those little taps for somebody that's not a trainer or hasn't handled a dog that's, uh, that pulls like he does or did. It just, it's like putting power steering on the dog. So you see how I use it throughout the video. And if you use it that way, it makes it really easy to handle a dog like this. So it's not for corrections. We are really not correcting him. So that's why we're using this. And it's a very small one. Um, and this choke chain, when he's out in public, it's doubled up on the leash only for safety's sake. So in case this little prong collar ever comes off, which they do occasionally out on the street, then the, uh, the choke chain, which is always hanging loose around his neck, would come into play and you wouldn't lose the dog out on the street. So this would never be used for training. This would be very dangerous. All the pressure is right there. It's a metal chain. So of course that would be really bad for his throat and we'd never do that. Uh, but it's only hanging there for safety just as a backup. So here uh, at my house, everything good happens in the crate. We feed him, he gets treats, we give him these marrow bones and all kinds of different bones and chewies to keep him busy in there. Um, his every association with the crate is very positive. He waits to be allowed in, and you'll see in a, a couple of moments, he waits to be allowed out. We use the crate as a tool for training, so it's much more than just a box that you throw him in and you know lock him in for punishment or whatever. It's actually it's his den. He sleeps in there overnight, never has an accident, he does really well. Of course, throughout the day, he's in and out frequently, all the time, every hour, every half an hour, he's outside again, back and forth, back and forth. Always sitting at doorways, always sitting in front of the crate, or being allowed to go in. So even just coming in and out of his crate throughout the day is a little training routine unto itself. So doing this crate routine, at least for a while, like the first couple of months in a new home or a new foster home, then you would have, you would be more likely to have what we have here because you're doing the routine that we do here. So it's a good thing to keep doing. You always have the crate that he loves to, uh, to you know, put him away in. If you have people over that don't like dogs or if he's not good with everybody, you can just put him in this crate in the back room, give him his favorite bone to chew on 
and he's happy and then let him out when the people are gone or you know you can also uh, travel with him in the crate he loves his crate so we just developed this crate as a uh, tool for training as his den place where all good things happen in his mind and it gives you a great way to manage him throughout his entire life so when I'm going to take him out the first thing I'm going to do is put the choke chain on we'll, we'll pretend we're taking him out on a walk again by the way this is out in the yard um, it's a better place tonight for us to film. Usually, of course, the crate's inside, but we couldn't film in there today. So I'm just showing you out here. So the first thing I do is I put the choke chain on around his neck. He gets a little treat as I do that. Always good associations with any time you reach in the crate. Not that he ever had an issue with that, but we just do that with every dog because then the next person, the, the owners, the family, or the next adopter just does what we do and he, he gets it and he's fine with it. So every time I reach in, he gets a treat. And then I just put on this, by the way, I attach the leash to the funny looking buckle, the little funny looking buckle on this this uh, prong collar. There's another uh, perfectly round ring, but that's just the spacer, so you don't touch it. Make sure that it's not twisted, so you just let it hang. It should be like this. That prong collar goes around, um, it's right underneath his, his ears, so it's the highest collar up. Choke chain and, and the uh, collar with his tags are down below, so the, the prong collar is right there under, under his ears. And then I attached the prong collar to the choke chain as well, so we're all hooked up. And if I hadn't been talking to you, I would have already been out, out on the street. But you see how he's waiting with the door open. And this is, of course, a very important boundary. You know, we've already talked about boundary training. Gates, curbs, doorways, the boundary, the doorway to his den. If you control it, He's much more likely to think that you're important in his life and that you're to be listening, listened to and that you're in charge. Good, and see when he waits, he gets rewarded. If he were to come out, I'd say no, and I'd give this little, that a little close, but of course he never does that anymore. So I could step back like this and he waits, gets a reward for that, good. Okay, he's waiting to be allowed to come out. I'm gonna close this here. And of course, you know, if this was in, this would be in the house. And then you take him wherever you're gonna take him. Okay. I just wanted to break down step-by-step step how I practice the come command with Mojo. And if you do it the same way every time, then it's really easy later on to just do it like it's second nature. And a lot of this has to do with how you handle the leash, making it really simple so you're not, you know, when he's coming to you, you're not having to do this and mess with the leash. So if you, if you just start off with having it on, over on your left hand on your wrist, just hanging there, even if you let go, you can't lose it. And of course, we're using a good quality six foot leash, a leather leash in this case. The right hand's free for the reward, for the target. Throughout the other videos, you see me call him, to come, call him to come to me a few times, so you see how I do it in real life. But when I'm practicing with him, I always make sure that he's not looking at me because in real life, of course, he's gonna be noticing something else, maybe another dog or a person or something else, maybe moving towards it, or it's something on the ground that he that's gross that he wants to get to that I don't want him to get to. Um, in the house, it could be getting to the trash or jumping on the counter, or who knows what it could be. So always practice in a, as much of a real life situation as possible where he's noticing something turned away from you at the very least and you call him to come to you and he has to break away from that and, and come back to you. Also, Whenever I call him to come to me, I always back away because standing still isn't half as good. When you back away, it draws the dog to you and it'll make him rush to you. See how he's looking away from me? Come. See that? Good. And of course, you saw just now my left hand, which is free, but still has the leash. Grab the leash so I have control over him. The right hand is the target with the reward in it. It's a closed fist, so in real life, just pretend like you have food. He's gonna to come to this every time. I can do it right now, there's nothing in there. I can, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm gonna create a distraction by tossing a little reward and then calling him away from it. So, go, he's gonna go get that, no treat, come. Good, if you don't have a treat, just love him up. We'll do it again, we'll keep doing it. Sit. 
go. Toss a treat, go. Come, there's no tree here. He still comes to this, good boy. He, he lost the treat I threw for him, he never got it, it's still over there. So do it again, go. See no treat, just target, come. Good boy. We practiced so many times that he has uh, no idea why he has to come to this. But whoever takes him after us should use the rewards for a while in your right hand, like I'm about to do again. Go. Come. Good. See his nose touches it, it opens up, you give him the treat. The other hand simultaneously grabs a leash so you have him. If he's free, if he's loose, sit. Go. So he's off leash. I'm going to throw the leash over here. I'm not going to use treats or any of that. Let him kind of wander over there somewhere, which he will in a second. Maybe I'll toss something. I'll toss a tree way over there. So show where I'm going to toss him way over there, okay? By the, by the gate. Go way over there. Way far away from me. No leash. Come. Good boy. If he doesn't have a leash, hook your left hand under that collar so you have him. If you don't do that and you practice in a way where you don't have him each time he comes back to you, he can easily learn that he can grab the treat and run off again. So you want to make sure that whenever he comes to you that you secure him with your hand or if you have a leash on him with grabbing the leash in your left hand. You see how easy it is and how it translates to off leash. Go. No treats again, just a, just a closed hand, so show me. Come. Good boy. And just saying good, also notice that I say good at the moment I give him the treat. So now, he just hears that word good, and he feels good about it. He doesn't know why. Um, so, uh, this is what we have now because of practicing hundreds of times. It's, it's an off-leash, really good off-leash recall, and whoever takes them after us, if they keep practicing this way, it just gets better and better. Good boy. Good boy. Go.